what is going on guys winter kills here welcome back to another post commentary duel video we got burning abyss versus danger orcist um the orcist build on the right is uh my build but this is before i made some changes to it and the burning abyss build on the left is the very similar to the one i uploaded uh in the deck profile a couple weeks ago but it's changed just a little bit um adding some different things in um, but I'll be updating both of these profiles again probably pretty soon within the next couple weeks or so. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. We've also have a Danger Orcus test hand video following up this video uh, at some point in the future. So getting started, he reveals Dogman. End up discarding a World Legacy or an Orchestrated Return. To summon out the Dogman, he'll get a draw. And then revealing a Mothman to discard a World Wand to get another draw. And having the field spell played um alongside of all of that now it is a little unfortunate because i think you might have drew in the world wand i know after he would have resolved the uh the uh, the uh, dog man um which is unfortunate because he would have had the uh um the uh, return uh to use to be able to draw two more cards which is pretty unfortunate because i'm assuming um he didn't start his turn uh, with that World Wand in hand and had it get discarded before he even had that card in his hand to have, that, have the opportunity to even use it, which is pretty unlucky. So he does have the pass there, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, definitely not one of the optimal turns for Orcus, uh, I would say. No other Orcus cards, no other normal summons, not really much else you can do there. Um, I mean, granted, he could have gone into Nightmare Phoenix and then just linked right into Mermaid. Um... I'm not sure why that wasn't done. Uh, I guess it just plays to the fact that my brother's still very new to the deck um, and didn't realize that was an option, um, which is totally understandable. So I ended up going over to me. I start with, you know, uh, Adam Sabres and Tracker, all the way up into Cherubini, and then eventually finding myself into a Dante here and uh, detaching Seer to Mill 3. And he makes a bit of a mistake, but I also make a bit of a mistake right in uh, right in return. Uh, I know, just such a quality content going up in here. And I also forget, you know, that uh, uh, Seer even activates, so I just don't summon off a Seer, so that's cool as well. Again, apologize for the absolutely uh, just whack plays going on. Um, so here he normal is 4-month skipper, reveals Nightmare Phoenix, and, uh, that's basically what you do with 4-month. You reveal a Nightmare, or you could reveal an Orcus if you needed to be. He could have done that in this situation. So going to go into Nightmare, and then on summon Nightmare is going to discard the Dark Greffer, and, uh, going to go ahead and special summon Orcus Nightmare. Uh, from his deck and there is a proxy in this uh, Orcus deck it is reasoning it's just a blank card for the time being uh, so on the summit of nightmare I'm gonna go ahead and flip up fire lake and I'm gonna destroy three cards as set uh, which happens to be a twin twister and uh, his uh, mermaid and his mothman I decided not to kill the field spell nor do I want to kill the nightmare because if I do either of those things he could possibly discard something to the grave to get the field spell back and uh, well I guess to be on a later turn but and he could also use the effect of you know nightmare Nightmare uh, engraved, so I decided not to do that. Um, going here into Cherubini, uh, and then a Seer reviving a Dante, and then I end up sending Sea Archiver off of Cherubini, and then when I summon the Edgem Sabres, Sea Archiver activates because something was summoned to his own uh, Link Monster points to, summoned to that zone, we get to summon himself back out, help make Dante pretty easy. And uh, I go ahead and send Farfa, I believe, off of that Fiendish Rhino Warrior. And uh, since I sent Sea Archiver here off of the, um, the Cherubini, he is now at 800. I know, he gains an additional 300 attack, which is, I know, absolutely just devastating. He only took 100 the previous turn of the Dante over the Dogman. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use the... Uh, the boots here to grab a fog blade, swinging for some damage there, a total of 20, or uh, like 30, 300 I believe, uh, 25 off of the uh, Dante, and then 800 off the Cherubine. He's going to rip the, uh, the reasoning, that is reasoning, that's a proxy, yeah, rip the reasoning for a turn. I believe I ended up calling, um, one, 
uh, because I didn't want him to get another four month skipper or uh, you know bombard or any level one. Uh, or I think no, I think I actually ended up calling two because I didn't want him to get Ibli, um, which I should have probably just called four. And even if I did call four, I would have just landed a Harpoor in his graveyard, which really wouldn't make too big of a difference because he just uses that point to summon a symbol skeleton and just keep making plays from there on out. Um, so now using Harp or the Orcus Nightmare, I should say, targeting Galatea to send a symbol skeleton to the graveyard. I'm going to try to make some plays happen here. Still has his field spell up, so all of his monsters can be quick effects if he so desires. And yes, I know that uh, this matchup is uh, not... It's one-sided post-dart Neostorm, the other side does not. I know that is the case. I really wasn't thinking of that in the time we were recording this. Um, I just wanted to play BA against his Orcus build. Um, or my Orcus build, I should say. And uh, didn't feel like digging out the proxies that I had for uh, Climax and Dingirsu, although I think this is still a pretty even matchup to begin with without those other cards in the equation. Um, also, take this time to shout out our sponsor over at Imperium Duels for providing some amazing sleeves and playmats and things of that nature. If you want to pick up any of the sleeves we're using or the playmat, uh, we've got here the Dragon Scale playmat or any of the playmats you've seen on the channel. You can go down in the description and pick those up for 10% off using that code uh, if you'd so desire. So we see the Harp Horror summoning out a, it looks like a Brass Bombard here. And uh, this matchup, I would say Long Gears who favors him really, really well. Um, because in most cases, I'm going to have a lot of monsters that are linked. Uh, that if he's sent to the graveyard, in some cases, would be pretty beneficial. Um, if, you know, he sends a Dante to the grave, it's not too big of a deal, but the fact that he can send Cherubini to the graveyard at any given point during any of my plays is really devastating. Um, so, looks like he was gonna go for Long Gearsu, but I don't think he is. No, I'm going to go for Long Gearsu here. Uh, I believe he also has a possible Borload Savage Dragon play as well, since he does have, um, the, what is it? Uh, World Wanding Grave still, um, which he can summon out Nightmare with. So, linking into the uh, Long Gear Suit, and then using Symbol Skeleton to summon out the uh, Brass Bombard. Now going to send the Dante to the Graveyard. I get to add back a card. I believe I add back Seer, as you would expect. And now, at this point, he can use World Wand to summon out the Orcus Nightmare that's banished. Classic Synchro combo. To go right into the Borload Savage Dragon, attempting to use this effect on someone, I immediately follow up with a Fog Blade that he knew I had. I mean, I guess he didn't really know. It could have been a Fire Lake as well, which would be just as devastating, um, since he can't stop that on summon. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty rough spot for him, I would say, at this point. I've got a Hydra Lantern in hand. I've also got Seer in hand. Um, there's really not a whole lot he can do. He can try to attack into something with Long Gear Suit, but he can't because he already used its effect. Or he could uh, potentially try to attack with, uh, you know, Savage Dragon, but he can't because of Fog Blade. So an overall round, he's just in a pretty bad spot. Uh, and he has only one Banished Machine right now, so he can't even use Long Gear Suit's effect if he wanted to. Uh, normal Summoning Seer to the zone that Cherubini points to will activate CR Kyver in the grave. And I'm going to use uh, Cherubini's effect here before I mill off Dante and detach uh, to send Rubik to the graveyard so I have a target for Seer. Milling 3, milling Skarm, which isn't too bad. Seer's going to go ahead and summon out Rubik. And then I'm going to go ahead and summon out the uh, Edgem Sabres by stacking a card back to the top of my deck. Go into Virgil, discard Cogna. Looking for something in his graveyard to possibly spin back because Virgil can do that. Um, so I think I end up spinning the Savage Dragon back to his deck. And earlier in the turn, when I sent Rubik, I targeted Dante this time around so that he'd be able to beat over Long Gearsu. I know I attacked over with uh, Virgil, uh, which is a mistake because for some reason I was under the, uh, the illusion that I had sent Rubik to, and used, used Tyrabini to target uh, Virgil, even though Virgil wasn't technically on the field. But either way, uh, Dante would have been able to beat over for 100, and then Virgil swinging in for 25 direct, and then 500 from the other Cherubini. While it's not game by life points, uh, I have a just way too much advantage at this given point. Uh, so he goes ahead and picks up the cards. As we head into game two, BA taking game one uh, pretty easily. Now, uh, both of our decks, I would say, really want to go first. I know a lot of BA decks right now can go second. Uh, the going first plays, I think, right now are just really uh, limited to maybe just underclock Beatrice, which is just really 
uh, lackluster. Uh, and luckily, Cherubini helps the deck have a much better going first turn. Um, you know, double Dante Cherubini with Fire Lakes and Fog Blades. It's a very good opening field as opposed to just Beatrice. Um, and one interruption as opposed to multiples. Um, so he gets the turn started with Foolish. Re resolving a Dogman. And I snipe the Dogman out of his hand. And then he reveals Jackalope. And I snipe the Jackalope out of his hand. The lucky dice uh, coming to my aid here. And I believe he's going to go ahead and special summon out a Dogman from his deck. Uh, that should be in defense position, I realize, but I don't think it makes too big of a difference at this point. Usually I catch those things, but wasn't paying too much attention this time, I suppose. Um, but like I said earlier, both of our decks really want to go first in this matchup. Uh, I think that's one thing to take away from it. And um, yeah, so the dice roll is kind of important in this matchup. And him playing Danger Orcus, he's definitely going to try to reap his revenge here going first, trying to set up that... Bomber Dragon Long Gear Sue play, which is so hard to break uh, with BA, I guess, for the most part. Um, if I open really well and I open to something like Mathematician, or just a really easy way to get to Farfa, if I can get access to Farfa really early on without going into Cherubini, uh, I have a much better chance at outing it. Um, because if I go into Cherubini, he's just going to send it to the graveyard with Long Gear Sue, uh, which is a no. Uh, no go for me because if I lose that Cherubini that early, I'm gonna be in a pretty bad spot overall. Now using the uh, Symbol Skeleton to summon out the Galatea, and uh, classic plays just happening here. Um, going to use Summon Source now to summon out the World Wand, and uh, yeah, just pretty much 90% way to get into this field. He definitely has it 100%. Using Galatea here before he goes ahead and links it to the grave, uh, to, you know, for Long Gear Sue, uh, setting the field spell, activating it. And uh, going to now go ahead and link into Longirisu. And then lastly, going to, uh, imagine, banish the World Wand and, uh, you know, summon out that Harpoor. And uh, link the Harpoor and the uh, Summon Sorceress into Bomber Dragon. So we'll see that happening here right now. Reviving the Harpoor. And I think it's always important to revive Harpoor here at the very end if you can. Uh, because if you get Harpoor in your grave, you are, you get, you're giving yourself two, uh, you know, field wipes instead of just one because if you would just leave symbol skeleton in your grave yeah you got the galatea but then that's all you pretty much can do after that so if they are, are able to recover uh you're not going to be able to uh capitalize on it so that's why having the harpoor is probably most optimal because you can summon out symbol and then symbol dies and then symbol can summon out something else etc etc so i summon uh mathematician to start here now i could have theoretically sent Farfa off of this, um, but the rest of my hand was uh, not the most optimal. So I decide instead actually to send Alec um, to negate the Bomber Dragon. For some reason, I, I was maybe perhaps mixing this up with a different game. Um, I think it, one of the other games we ended up playing out, I opened Mathematician into this field, but like sending Farfa would have just um, not have manage the best field uh like i would have sent farfa and then like that would have been my turn because the rest of my hand was just not uh the greatest um yeah i think like it was just a really unlucky situation to be in uh but i do summon the cherubini and as i feared um since it is a quick effect he can chain long gears effect here after resolving that uh harp horror to summon out symbol skeleton which if i were him i still would have summoned it under the uh, Bomber Dragon to get that Symbol Skeleton in Grave, so he'd still have a Board Wipe available. But luckily for him, I just can't do much else after that. Um, I was able to negate the Bomber Dragon for a little bit, um, but if I don't negate the Bomber Dragon, he has the Longirisu, and if I don't negate the Longirisu, he has the Bomber Dragon. So I'm just forced just to set one and pass, uh, which is pretty unlucky. Gonna get his turn started here with Orcus Nightmare in Grave, sending Symbol Skeleton, of course, targeting Bomber Dragon to boost it up to 3300. Because Orcus Nightmare makes the monster uh, that it targets gain attack equal to level of the uh, Dark Machine monster sent times 300. Now using Galatea, uh, after reviving it with the Symbol Skeleton, shuffling back the Symbol Skeleton to set that orchestrated return uh, to his field. And then going to play it immediately, I think, to discard a World Wand in hand uh, and drawing two more cards. I love resolving orchestrated return. It's just such an amazing card. Um, now, both of us are still at full life points right now, so, uh, he could go into Boral Sword, uh, but since I don't have an attack position monster, probably not the best idea. Luckily, he attacked with the Long Gear Suit first, because 
that Rubik does have 2100 defense after he swings in with everybody else 3300 from Bomber, 18 from Galatea, and 1200 from Symbol Skeleton. Drops me down pretty low to 17. Now he could have linked the uh, Symbol and the Longirisu uh, into like a Orcustrion uh, for an extra 500 damage. Um, I guess not really since he would have attacked with that first, so it really doesn't make too big of a difference in what type of damage he can deal either way. So double long gear suit now, and I have tour guide. Really great draw to see, right? Not when there's a field nuke uh, incoming. Uh, it's really kind of bittersweet. And I go, you know, tour guide for graph. Uh, I could have gone for the um, Rhino Warrior, uh, right? And that protects my field from destruction by card effects. But ultimately, I still meet the fate of having to go into Cherubini here to make any further plays. Which right now, as you see, uh, is going to, at some point here, um, use the effect of one of his long gear shoes uh, to send that Cherubini to the graveyard. Now, he's letting me play it out a little bit longer here. And I'm going to use Graph here. Now, ideally, I would always summon something to the zone that uh, Cherubini points to. But that triggers Bomber Dragon and uh, I will have to lose my Seer. Uh, and thinking about what to summon now off of my Seer, I could go for Rubik, try to go to Virgil to spin back that Bomber Dragon just to get it off the field. And I summon Alec, and uh, I played this out a little weird here, I apologize for this. Summon out Alec, Alec dies, and now it's negated. Um, uh, now the Bomber Dragon is negated. So I go ahead and uh, try to play a little bit because I have a C archiver in hand so if I can just resolve like uh, the effect of um, uh, the Cherubini here to send something to get anything on my uh, field that you know anything that uh, a link monster points to if I can summon anything uh, I'm in a decent spot so I send Skarm and then I special summon Libic from hand um, and then, of course, that activates when Libic gets summoned. Sea Archiver activates. Um, and I'm in a fragile spot because I needed that Cherubini because without the Cherubini, now the Libic dies because it's no longer being protected by the effect of Cherubini. So we're going to go right into game three. One game apiece here. Orcus uh, taking that game pretty commandingly. I tried to slip my way through uh, that Bomber Dragon play. Um, maybe could have I would have seen some other cards. Um, it's just hard to deal with mass removal I would say um, for this deck uh, you know Farfa and Alec only help out so much uh, especially when you're dealing with multiple board wipes uh, and then you know if you stop the board wipe you still have to worry about uh, you know you losing your link monster uh, it's just really really tough I guess you know I could have in a perfect world farfa the bomber dragon and then try to summon in the zone that the uh, you know bomber dragon was in so I don't have to worry about long gear suit but even if I try to make a Cherubini, any other play I attempt to make underneath that will be stopped by Long Gear Suit because those monsters are considered linked. So that's just something I have to still worry about. Uh, if I could get rid of both monsters, that would be the most ideal thing. Maybe Gallus for Farfa, and then Mathematician send uh, Alec, and then I'm just really in a good spot. Um, he gets started with Dogman. After setting a card, going to discard that Brass Bombard out of his grave, draw a card, and then he's going to summon Greffer. And on Greffer's normal summon, he's going to go ahead and discard Orcus Nightmare to send another Dart Monster from his deck to the graveyard. It's going to be none other than Harp Horror. Now, I did manage to make Beatrice, uh, which will prove to be a bit of an issue for him. And I say just a bit, because, um, again, one interruption for the type of opening that he has, especially with Foolish Burial now. Uh, like, his hand is just, it was just insane. Um... One Farfa, even if it's the most well-time Farfa on the planet, I still don't think it's going to make uh, a huge deal here. Using Brass Bombard now to special summon out the Symbol Skeleton from his hand. So he could do a whole lot here. Um, of course, he just go into the standard Galatea play, which is probably what he's going to go into anyways. And like I said, he would. He is. And into Galatea we go. And uh, he could use the effect of Galatea. He does have a Bombard. Um... And now he's going to link into not Summon Sorceress, but Long Gear Suit. Because if he would have gone into Summon Sorceress, that would have been a no-brainer uh, screaming, hey, far for that 100%. So, and he knows that too. If he goes into Summon Sorceress, he's leaving himself in a very vulnerable spot. Um, and I believe he's using uh, Orcus Nightmare now. 
to send World Wand to the graveyard to be able to boost Longear so up by 800, putting him to 33. And uh, now meeting that requirement of two banished machine monsters, uh, before he activates anything else, uh, I have to chain uh, the Beatrice. Actually, I think I chain it in the response of Long Gear Suit because I can't send Alec because Alec uh, won't activate in time. He'll activate on a separate chain. So I'm right now I'm debating what's the best BA monster to send to the grave. And of course, it's going to be Farfa. And uh, since my Beatrice was linked, um, I'm going to lose it to the Long Gear Suit. Uh, granted, I could have linked into Bardiche, um, and then it wouldn't have been linked, uh, and I'd have probably a double fog blade set. Um, I think it might have though, because I maybe opened a, uh, boots, and maybe that's why I didn't go for it. I'm not entirely sure. I don't, I think looking back now, hindsight, of course, being 2020, I think that's what I should have done. Um, but I honestly wasn't expecting to, you know, have to try and play around a long gear suit that much. Because if I would have, if, actually, no, I don't think it would have made too big of a difference. Because had I made Bardiche in the other zone, then he just summons Longirsu in the zone where Cherubini is, and he still can send my, uh, my Beatrice to the grave. Granted, I would have Fog Blades, but I feel like with the really strong hand that he opened, um, playing through a couple Fog Blades wouldn't be so bad, um to begin with so now going into bomber dragon with the uh long gear suit and a nightmare and um symbol skeleton back out the long gear suit and uh of course graph does not die because graph is being pointed to by cherubini therefore it cannot be destroyed by card effect so i'm okay from bomber dragon at this point um which is nice um i don't have to worry about uh losing anything but since that bomber dragon activated uh, I don't think he can attack, um, which I think was a bit of a... No, he can attack, but it is the only monster that can attack because uh, of its own effect. It doesn't prevent uh, him from attacking, period. It just prevents him uh, from attacking at all, um, or prevents other monsters from attacking. So he kills the Graf, um, then, or he tries to kill the Cherubini, rather, uh, and then I opt to send Graf instead of destroying Cherubini so I can get Alec on the field. At least, during my uh, standby phase, he activates Longirsu, sending the Cherubini to the graveyard since it was linked. Again, all he really has to do in this matchup is just send my linked Cherubini to the graveyard. That's all he has to do. And on the normal summon of Seer, he activates the quick effect of Orcus Nightmare and Grave to send our Orcus Harpoor. And since that is a quick effect, he can activate that as well as soon as it's the graveyard before I have even a chance to go into a link monster because he does have quick effects to activate here and he summons symbol skeleton and the bomber dragon activates destroying all monsters in the main monster zone and uh, I get to activate a seer Alec gets to activate here to negate a monster so Alec negates the bomber dragon now I summon Gallus luckily I don't mill a trap and I mill a psychic wielder and I go into Dante, Dante detaching Seer, milling three, milling into Block Dragon, Fog Blade, and a Fire Lake. Summoning out Block Dragon now just to try to buy some time. Banishing three Earths and uh, leaving my Dante in defense. I can only crash at this point. So I crash the Block Dragon to add back another Block Dragon. And uh, I, I don't know if I have enough targets in deck to summon it again. Uh, I just wanted to clear that long gear suit off the field because if I don't, it's going to be a problem for me next turn. If I do, uh, it's going to be a problem for me next turn because he has Symbol Skeleton and there's not a whole lot I can do about stopping his Symbol Skeleton uh, because he can just summon it right there. I'll send the Dante to the grave. I get to add back a card, sure, um, but he's got to deal uh, 5,500 damage, which as it is right now, uh, he cannot because he's used long gear suit's effect. It says that he cannot attack the turn that, turn that effect that is activated. So... Um, this is just how we ruled it. Uh, I don't know if it actually would work this way 100%, but I believe if he makes Longirsu leave the field after activating that effect, and then bring him back, another copy of him, um, because it doesn't strictly say that this card, like, its name in quotes cannot attack the turn that it activates that effect. Um, it just says this card. So I believe if it leaves the field and comes back, it would be able to attack. Uh, so he uses... I believe wand to summon out Harpoor and then linking away the uh, bomber dragon and the Harpoor for Galatea 
and using its fact to, I believe, set another orchestrate a return right now, trying to just go for game, trying to find how to get that 5,500 on board. Going to use now the Harpoor in his grave that he was able to put there by summoning it using World Wand earlier, and now has a symbol skeleton on the field. Linking into an Orcustrion, now using that symbol skeleton to bring back Long Gear Suit, now having uh, 55, 65, 7300 damage. So he has plenty of damage that he was able to pull up out of pretty much nowhere. Um, and just was since he was able to bring out uh, another copy of Long Gear Suit, he does not have to worry about that effect of it not being able to attack because that only affects that copy that's on the field. And I believe if it would leave the field uh, and come back, it would be able to attack. So, and then obviously that's game. He just decides to uh, flex a little bit and, uh, you know, resolve his return, draws into a scrap recycler, and yeah, it's just game all around. Uh, this is a really fun matchup. I really like this matchup a lot, uh, especially right now. And once it gets, once it goes to post dark and Neostorm, it'll be even, uh, even funner. Um, and I know a lot of people give me, uh, you know, grief about the Phantom Knight engine that I play in here. Um, I definitely made a few misplays. We both definitely made a few misplays, but these are just testing matches. Um, so these things are bound to happen. You know, we're only humans. Uh, and I do apologize for that. Um, just try to cut down those, cut down on those in the future, of course, as we both, uh, become, uh, more accustomed to each of these decks. Um... But I think going forward, I think I might modify the Phantom Knight engine uh, to play more, like a few for, more Phantom Knight monsters. So if I do draw into a boots or boots and cloak, uh, I don't have to worry about not being able to resolve uh, the uh, Bardiche. But I hope Bardiche gets banned uh, or rank up Magic Launch. Uh, both of those cards are just are just really bad for the game right now. Uh, and if we've seen you know any indicator of that, it's been within like the last few weeks with all these uh, as a thought turbo builds and. Uh, people abusing the hell out of Bardiche. Uh, it's just a one card double negation for free. Or, uh, you know, your opponent can't activate any monster effects, which is just really devastating for a lot of decks to deal with. Even decks that aren't that monster light, like Sky Striker. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist if you want to see me test these decks live on stream. If you want to chat with me live on stream, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitch. Link to that down in the description. Join Discord as well. Uh, to get updates and content posts and things of that nature. So, as guys, hope you're having a good one. And uh, Winter Kill is signing out. We'll see you in the next one.